Once you have the blank of your car constructed, which also shows the cartridge hole, it's time for us to start designing your actual car. Now, before we get fully started, I will recommend that you change the view of your inventor. So under view, which is up here at the top, you're gonna to go to visual style and change it to shaded with hidden edges. That's going to give us a dotted line outline so that we can see where our cartridge hole is. Now you can see on my inventor, I can see that dotted line from the back, but not from the front. So you may have to toggle your perspective just a little bit, but it will help to ensure that you're not actually cutting through that cartridge hole. Now, if your car design is angular and kind of boxy, when you start your sketch and you go to start making your car, you'll be able to do it with lines pretty easily. But if you have a lot of curves, for example, if you have an eddy in your car design, how do you make those curves? There is a wonderful tool called the spline tool. So you can see I just clicked on this little carrot underneath line and I can pick my spline control vertexes. With this tool, it works a little bit differently. So I'm gonna click multiple times, and every time I click, it creates a vertex or a point where it will curve. So if I know that I wanna have an eddy, so it's up in the front and then dips down, I can click a couple of times along the way. I would click maybe up to 10 times on a single spline, again, knowing that each click will give you that vertex. What I really like about this tool is that after you click, you can continue to adjust things by clicking and dragging those vertexes so you can fine tune the shape of that spline. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time you make it because of that ability. So you can add in those curves. Now, if that is the shape of your car, you can then go ahead and use the regular line tool to connect the ends, essentially boxing in the parts of your car you don't want. So if all this right here is the car that I do want, I've just created a box around everything I'd like to get rid of. And you'll see I did pay close attention to make sure that I had that green dot when I connected the ends. That way when I finish my sketch, I can go ahead and extrude that profile, completely cutting it away, leaving behind the shape of my car. Allow me to back up a couple of steps because here's where some of those measurements you took are going to come in handy. So let's say that we know that our car is 270 millimeters long. I can use a line to create that 270 millimeter measurement. So I know that, hey, cool, right here, that's where my spline is going to start. I can also make benchmarks for myself so that if I know that the front section of my car is about 20 millimeters long, I can create some additional reference geometry. So that's the front section of my car. And if I know that I want it to come up for 20 millimeters, again, additional reference geometry. As far as that eddy, if I know that it's going to be about another 100 millimeters long, I can go ahead and make that. And then if it comes back up to be 90 millimeters, I can go, oops, sorry, that was too long. I can go ahead and input that measurement. Sorry, let's do 35 millimeters. I can input that measurement and use these as my reference pieces. Now, if you're afraid that these are going to get in your way or become confusing to you, you can change them to your center line format. We use this very briefly when we were doing our gears. So up here under format, we can use center line. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna change those lines to dotted lines, just to remind you that they're reference geometry. So they do not have to be part of your final design. And again, remembering that with our vertexes, we can click past some of these points and just kind of use them as benchmarks. Clicking the check mark when we're done and then clicking and dragging those vertexes as needed to form our shape. So there we go. That's kind of an example of how you can use that reference geometry and a spline to match your sketch. Again, when you're done, you're going to go from end point to end point, making sure you encase all of that car wood that you don't want so that we can extrude it all away. And again, extrude and cut, and there we go. 
Now let's take a look from our top view for a moment. Because now that I've created this spline on my car, when I go to do my top view from the actual top, if I click on start new sketch, it's not going to work or it might not work super well on a curved surface. So what you may need to do or what you may want to explore is starting that from the actual bottom perspective and then cutting upwards rather than the top perspective and cutting down. Whichever way you choose to address it, if we're doing a real car or changing the width of our car at any point, that is what we would do from that top or bottom perspective, again, using splines or lines to help create that shape. So if I know that I want a curved front, I can go ahead and curve it in the front. If I know that I want a rail structure in the middle before it bows back out at the end, I can go ahead and create that spline. Now, as I am clicking and dragging these splines, you'll notice that this one right here that I clicked on the actual outline of my car, I can move it to the left and the right, but I can't actually move it up or down. That is something that Inventor sometimes does. If you are making a spline and you think, oh, I might want to move this out, just be careful not to actually click on any existing lines. But again, clicking and dragging, forming that shape. Now with a spline tool, one thing that I don't love about it is that it is kind of hard to replicate exact splines just by freehanding it. But there is a way that we can take that and mirror it right across the center line so that we have a completely symmetrical car. In order to use that mirror option, you are going to need a regular line right down the middle. And then we will use our mirror tool to select our spline, click on our mirror line, and then apply that curve thus creating a perfectly symmetrical car. Again, if I am going to cut away everything that I don't want, I'm going to encase that in lines, getting from end point all the way around to end point. Now, if you look closely, you will see that right here, there is actually a gap that's going to cause me a problem. So I can either connect that with a line or since upon further inspection, this is not actually where I want it to be, I can go ahead and move that line. You do have the ability to move some things in Inventor. So using our move tool, I'm gonna to start by selecting the line I would like to move and then selecting my base point selector so I can select the actual base point. I'm going to use that bottom corner and you'll notice it gave me a pop-up because I used other geometry to mirror and create this line. So in Inventor's mind, it has some constraints placed on it already. I'm gonna click yes, you can remove those constraints and that will allow me to move this pretty freely. I can go ahead and get it actually in that bottom corner. And so now I have a more uh, lined up car. That must not have been perfectly in the middle. So I can just go ahead and delete that, knowing that I did in fact mirror and I'm now good to go with my car. Let me redraw that line real fast, making sure to get to the end point. And let's go ahead and extrude this, grabbing all those pieces we do not want and cutting them away. You may have to change the distance when you are doing um, your top view just to make sure it does get fully through the car. And then when all is said and done, you should be able to see your progress. In the next video, we're going to go over how to add the axle holes and also explore how to, how to add the shell to the center of your car if you are doing a shell car.